is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Right, right, right. How you doing, baby? You doing all right? You doing good? Doing good. Uh, let's clean up something from the last segment. Miami Dolphins quarterbacks who have won the rating title, Tua, this season. Marino did do it in his MVP season of 1984. He did have the highest rated? He did, yeah. He actually, by a pretty fair amount, all those touchdowns, that huge YPA uh, offset the fact that he threw about 17 picks that year. And Bob Greasy did it in 1977. I was also surprised. You mentioned Montana. He actually only did it twice. No shame in that. But Steve Young actually did it, I think, six times in seven years. People, I would figure in that offense. In that yeah. offense, they it, it's funny because Montana wasn't throwing 80 yard bombs or 50 yard bombs all the time. It was all these short slants and and crossing routes and and all that stuff. And then it was you know it was Jerry Rice <laughs> taking it all away and or John Taylor or you know whatever or in in Young's uh, uh, point, Terrell Owens also was part of that. Mm-hmm. They had exceptional tight ends also uh, throughout. So they, they, they just had explode, and Roger Craig was a guy that gave him a lot of explosion too, coming out of the backfield. So I figured, you know, I, I don't remember, but I would figure that those were more higher percentage, higher percentage throws and, you know, and, and, and opportunities for him compared to Marino, who was, dude, he was gunslinging it all the time. He had no running game, man. Come on. He had a terrible defense. And also, I, I don't think Marino ever played with a Hall of Fame wide receiver. I mean, Clayton and Duper were, were really yes. good players, but oh, they, no, they, weren't, Hall they weren't Jerry Rice, right? Uh, well, I got to Listen, dude, I lived it. I'll be a complete homer here. Mark Clayton was the second best receiver in the NFL next to Jerry Rice. Okay, he, he was when fun, Mark man. He was, was so good his... in the air, so good in the air, so good at, at you know one of those guys. Even when he wasn't open, just throw him the ball and make a play. I, he could out jump you. That guy could dunk at like five ten or whatever the hell he was. You would watch him in the uh, 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 whatever that uh, what's that called the uh, superstars superstars thing, and he'd be you know uh, what's it called deadlifting like five hundred pounds or something. He was a super super athlete. Yeah. Could Clayton have been good was a lot of an elite sports, sure. player. I, I think they've been robbed because of the off-the-field issues that they had, which were short-lived off-field issues. They weren't long-lived. They had blips in their careers that they did a couple bad things, whatever. Lots of other guys have done worse and for a longer period of time, and I think they've been penalized because if you look at their stats, they dwarf Lin Swan. Dwarf Lin Swan. Okay, but the problem is, what does Lynn Swan have that they don't have? Those big moments in the touchdowns. In the, right. In the yeah. Yeah. Lynn, uh, the super, the Hall of Fame is so heavily slanted towards legacy building in the playoffs, legacy building in the Super Bowl. I always maintain because Swan went in the Hall of Fame before Stallworth. I always maintain Stallworth was the better player, but Swan, Lynn Swan, and this is why it pisses me off that Steve Sable did not get in the Hall of Fame until after he d- he died, and he and he lived in the seventies, right? I hate when Steve, we do that. Steve Sable is is why people get in the Hall of Fame. Steve Sable is a big reason why Lynn Swan waltzed into the Hall of Fame because everybody saw Lynn Swan in slow motion making these unbelievable catches against the Cowboys. You know, I was a little bit too young to actually have lived through it. But I saw the highlights. That's where the legacies are made. If It still blows my mind. And again, I'm preaching in the choir. I mean, you guys know all about the Dolphins A to Z. After that second Marino season where he wins MVP, he goes to the Super Bowl. If you had told me that Dan Marino would be healthy and have a long career and be all over the record book and they'd never get back to a Super Bowl, I'd say, get out of here. Right. They, they're going to go back. You know, I don't know if it'll be two times, three times, four times, but they're going to get back. And well, but see, here's the thing: we have to now we have hindsight now, mm-hmm. and here's where we have to think about it and say that was uh, that was actually not really smart of us to say this. Why they got there without a defense and a running game? Mm-hmm. How many times are you going to do that? And that's why he never went back because Shula never fixed a running game. And Shula never gave him a dominant defense, whereas Montana went back over and over again. Why? Because he had an elite defense and he had an elite running game to go along with that pass offense and that monster offensive line. And so Marino, really, the fact that he made it there was a miracle in itself is really the way we have to look at it. 
that thought of oh they'll be back again no actually that was that was foolish that's 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 a uh, fool's gold as they say on our part because if you think about it how many guys get back there over and over again without a defense and a running game oh, i'm not in any way cheapening what marino did it's just that to solve the most important thing in the nfl which we know is get get your quarterback and they solved it yeah. and marie and marino was so good with his release that the offensive line almost i mean like dwight stevenson hall of famer of course center and everything but marino got rid of the ball so quickly you could never sack him Right, you know, and I, I grew up in New England. I always expected the Patriots to lose to the Dolphins. I was shocked when New England beat them in the '85, '86 playoffs, and, and we got robbed of the game everybody wanted. Right, everybody wanted to see Miami play Chicago again. A, Miami fumbled Dol- uh, three times in that game. I want to say right. that I think those were the key, the real killers in that game were the fumbles. Actually, that's the game we all wanted to see. Right, obviously Miami was the only team that beat Chicago in that famous Monday Night game. Mm-hmm. And I think they would have given that, you know, they would have had the best quarterback in the game at that point against the best defense I've ever seen. Uh, that's that would have been, I think, 46 10. It would have been more competitive than that. Let's just let's just go there. I'm with you there. By the way, I've been talking about this that, you know, I have watching Skyler this year. I have not seen enough from him to um, to say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable bringing him back next year because it's a super luxury to be your number three again. Mm-hmm. He not he has not done enough to elevate him to be a number two and reliable just in case because what uh, everything I hear Scott the plan is two next year so mm-hmm. none of this other stuff uh, Tom Brady all that that's not going to happen it's going to be two next year they're moving forward but if you're going to move forward with Tua then the important part is who's the backup and so for me Skyler hasn't done enough to show me. And it's a super luxury to say, oh, we'll bring you back to be the number three again. I think that would be a waste of a roster spot at this point. If I'm the Dolphins, I'm trying to find a better backup plan. What is realistic in your eyes? Let me ask you this. What's the status of Teddy Bridgewater? Um, It's a one-year contract. Okay, That's it. You think you can bring him? You can bring him back next year, but I don't know. I again, reliable. He's broken down too. I don't know if somebody's going to sign Gardner Minshew to be a starter. I would. I think he'd be a perfect backup if you could get him. But he may, you know, the story of the year in fantasy and really in the NFL to me has been, look at week 18, right? All these teams playing their third string quarterbacks, right? And fourth string in some cases. Arizona was playing David Blau, who was their fourth string quarterback. Obviously, we, we see this weekend a couple of teams aren't playing their starters. Miami's playing their third stringer. Maybe Baltimore may be playing their third stringer. It used to be that... You, you, everybody was a pocket quarterback, and they you expected a guy to play a full season. You really need to have a, a plan. You really need to feel really good about your second guy. And this year, I've never seen more third-string quarterbacks play. And one reason why the 49ers, and I, I think they, they got lucky, because I don't think anybody thought Brock Purdy was going to be anything special, but they got lucky that he was ready for his close-up. I know they've scaled back the offense, and they haven't thrown the ball as much, but his efficiency stats are just as good as Jimmy Garoppolo's. And again, they were really lucky they had Jimmy Garoppolo. Trey Lance got hurt with the second week of the season, I want to say. The NFL now, it used to be, well, you could only pay one quarterback, and you, you get, everybody else is going to get a really small deal. I think teams are going to start prioritizing it. There's even some talk. I don't think the Bears are going to draft a quarterback, but I don't think it would be crazy. Justin Fields with that sack oh, rate. Yes, right? Justin dude. Fields, I don't know what he's going to be. He was a great fantasy player, but I'm not sure if, if he's the answer. I I don't know. I, you remember when the Cowboys – go- dude, dude, he has to make Jalen Hurts um, advancement in mm-hmm. order to feel good about him, or if not – I get, look, Lamar has lived off his legs – Mm-hmm. But eventually he can't beat you with his arm, and now he's breaking down. And that is what's coming for Justin Fields. That Exactly what's happened to Lamar is exactly what's going to happen to Justin Fields overall. You better be more like Jalen Hurts, and you better improve your accuracy, and you better find a way to beat people from the pocket. You don't have to live from the pocket, but when they force you to live from that pocket, you need to make them pay. And that's something that Justin Fields and Lamar Jackson cannot do on a consistent basis. And that's where I give Hurts, man, a ton of credit because I really saw his his accuracy just go leaps and bounds this year. For Pretty sure. Uh, and you know, they set up a great offense. They have one of the best offensive lines in football. A.J. Brown is the top five receiver, and it was a totally seamless 
transition. That was so crazy this year that the quarterbacks who changed teams didn't do so well, but obviously Tyreek Hill was great in Miami. A.J. Brown was great in Tennessee. Devontae Adams, although he had some ups and downs, still led the league in touchdown catches. But look around the league, right? Who's going to take the Denver job? You have to try to fix Russell Wilson. I don't know how much longer Matthew Stafford is going to play or Aaron Rodgers is going to play or Tom Brady is going to play. Matt Ryan may be ready to retire. For some reason, Washington thought Carson Wentz was the answer when a playoff spot was still in the offing. I, look, I, I know that Taylor Heineke is a limited player too, but I thought going back to Wentz was a mistake. I think Wentz's days of a starter is gone. It's gotten to the point where I say to myself, Big O, oh, oh, good, the Giants are on. Thank God Daniel Jones is on my TV set. He's one of the right answers now. Jared Goff is one of the right answers now. The Patriots have a, a mess of quarterback. Mac Jones you know, slid backwards. Zach Wilson didn't know what he was doing in New York all season. It's, it's a mess, man. Deshaun Watson looked like a guy who had never played football before the last six weeks off his two-year layoff. I've, the league needs, and I know that this can be a very big quarterback draft class. They're going to go early, then maybe four or five in the first round. We need some of these guys to be good. I'm so encouraged with Trevor Lawrence. He took a big step forward. Obviously, Urban Meyer being gone helped there. But And I'd love – And love you know what? I'm not a Mac Jones guy that much. Me neither. But I got to say, the Patricia thing had to have hurt him, For just sure. like Trevor Lawrence was hurt by, by Stanky Fingers – just like Tua was probably also hurt by Brian Flores. Mm -hmm. When you don't have the proper coaching around you, you know what I mean? But I, I know Trevor can be an elite player. I know Tua can be an elite player. I don't think Mac can be an elite player. But he can be, I think, a serviceable quarterback. But Patricia, brother, I, I mean, that that was yes. a disaster. The, the Patriots are obviously going to make major changes to their, their coaching staff. They have to. They have it's to. just so funny that with all these guys who miss some of the safe harbors were Geno Smith were Jared Goff, were yeah. Daniel Jones, who I think is the most improved player in the league, and that speaks to the coaching, right? Because yeah. Jones did it with a very ordinary group of receivers. They're missing two impact guys. But Dable did a great job with Jones, and he cleaned up. The big thing with Jones is that he fumbled the ball constantly, and he had an interception problem. He led the league in lowest interception rate this year, and he got the fumbles cleaned up. Back to Tua. I, I, you look, you, you got to give him another year. Hopefully, concussions are complicated. I'm not a doctor. I would love to see what Tua could do with give him four healthy months, man. He'd be in the Pro Bowl. He'd be he was an MVP candidate at one point this season. I know. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I, I know it could get ugly this week. You're, you're not playing the quarterback you want. Buffalo's a tough draw. We we get it. Could be cold weather, but you hired a good coach. You got a good quarterback. You have maybe the best two receiver pair in the league. It's going to be right there with anybody else. Tyreek Hill just scares the pants off everybody. Say the same thing about Jalen Waddle. I could watch that guy's highlights all day, that touchdown he had against Green Bay on, on Christmas Day. Jalen Waddle's the king of, this is really a touchdown, this play? Yeah, it is. He just ran by nine guys. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. You know, a lot. Nobody thinks Miami's going to the Super Bowl. Not even the, the most Homer, rose-colored glasses guy. But a step forward was made this year. We just got to keep Tua healthy next season. Sean just told us this morning they're they're going all the way. So you know, he's uh he's he said he he wants he wants to really party in the house I got in Arizona because I got a house for for a week in Arizona. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to use it now, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, let's get to some daily fantasy for sure. those that are going to be playing on Saturday and Sunday. Seattle and San Francisco. Brock Purdy over and under two twenty one in passing yards. Going over there, and I'm going to link it up. I've already punched a George Kittle ticket. Seven touchdowns in four weeks is over under in yardage is something like 43 or something like that. He's going to go over on that. He had his way with the Seahawks. All the games are matchups this week, uh, rematches. And we saw these teams play a few weeks ago. I think it was 21 to 10 or 21 13, but San Francisco really controlled the game. And, and I'll, just, I'll just make it really simple for you. Anything you want to bet in Seattle, I'm going under. I think they're going to score 10 points or fewer. Yeah, it, it's gotten worse and worse for them. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm with you there. Uh, McCaffrey, 40 and a half yards receiving. I, I, like, more, I, mean, I love the over in that one, actually. I like it. The, only, the thing that's tough with San Francisco is they have, now that Samuel's back, they have four really good guys that they can throw the ball to. So it, they could cannibalize each other a little bit. A, a sleeper I have, if you can get it, this is more of a prop than something I'd use in DFS. Eli Mitchell's going to get 10 carries in this game. If his rushing prop oh, is somewhere okay. in the 20s or 30s, That's man, I think he pushes over this because the game's going to get out of hand. Out of hand, right. And they're not going to want half. McCaffrey to get 27 touches. Right. So I think right. Eli oh, Mitchell you plays. Out. You get him out. Let him rest. He's too injury prone. You don't want to do that to him. For sure. Keep him fresh for the next round. Oh, I'm with you there. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Uh, Debo Samuel. 
43 and a half, and Brendan Ayuk, 48 and a half, over and under receiving yards. Ayuk would be the one I'd punch first. Although, again, Kittle is the guy I like the most. And it, really, a Kittle, if you can get a touchdown prop on Kittle, because the big thing with George Kittle for fantasy was always, well, he's a great player. Why does he score five touchdowns every year? And for some reason, Brock Purdy, man, he. He likes those big targets over the middle. A lot of times that's where a young quarterback goes, and he's connected with with Kittle. So he's the one guy in the passing game I would look to use first because then I think it's going to be a lot of running in the second half. Yep, I'm with you there. All right, Chargers and Jags. Justin Herbert over under 282.5 passing yards. I'm going to lean under because I think the game will be competitive and Mike Williams back injury. He'll play. He's limited. The Chargers lack a lot of team speed. They lost Jalen Guyton early in the season. They never upgraded that receiver room. I think it needs a fresh coat of paint in the offseason. The prop I really like in this game, the Chargers do not stop the run. Travis Etienne, I know it's in the 70s, but he's going to go over that. I think Etienne's going to be around 100 and a half, yards. Over yeah. and a- 77 and a half, yes. I don't know why they don't throw him the ball because he's, he's never had more than three catches. I mean, he played with Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. That's one of the reasons ETM was a first-round pick. They thought he was a dual threat. He's been more of a run-first guy. But the Chargers are one of these teams that say, you know what, run the ball on us. We don't care. We're going to try to shut down your outside threats. We're going to try to shut down your passing game. And if we give up four or five yards of carry, think of the Tony Dungy Colts. That's what Brandon Staley wants to do. ETN is going to sail past 100 yards in this game. All right. Uh, George Kittle, by the way, the only thing I have so far is 43 and a half receiving yards, 9.15 fantasy points and four receptions, higher or lower. That's all I've got. All overs for me. They're they're all overs for (laughs) me. Okay. I love it. All right. Uh, Miami and Buffalo, Tyreek Hill over and under 61 and a half yards. I got to go over for two reasons. One, Tyreek Hill can do it on one play. And two, we, you know, we're talking about 13 points spread here. I just think the game's going to get out of hand. Most are probably not available. That they're going to be there's going to be enough passing volume in this game that Hill can get there, even if the game's out of hand. Uh, I again, again Tyree Kill, he could do he could do nothing, and then one play later, you're happy and you're counting your money. Yeah, he's picking up a fumble from somebody else and then taking it <laughs> right. 60 yards. A touchdown yeah. against the Chargers, right? It's Tyree Kill for you, man. And yeah, yeah. Uh, Waddle, uh, 47 and a half receiving yards over and under. God, is that – remember, Buffalo's got problems in the secondary, right? I mean, uh, obviously they lost Hamlin. Hey, Glad to see he's yeah. doing better. Micah Hyde hurt. Um, Poyer has been dinged up. And the teams have thrown the ball on them. Mac Jones and his cast of thousands – you know, Devontae Parker was making plays on Buffalo. You can actually throw the ball. Now, granted, we'll see how well Thompson plays. That's the the X factor here, but I'm mm-hmm. not going to hold it against Hill and Waddle. That's a really low number. In fact, I would punch Waddle before I would punch Hill, but I think they're both appealing to me. All right, here's the painful part. Dolphin fans, put your uh, put your fingers on your ears there. Uh, Josh Allen, over and under 255 and a half. Rushing yards, 49 and a half, and two and a half total TDs. You know, a year or two ago, I would say I'd be all over the rushing, but the books have gotten smart because what happens is these quarterbacks, a lot of times in the playoffs, they think, okay, there's no tomorrow. What am I saving myself for? And they run more aggressively, but that number has been pumped up so much. And if Buffalo does win the game, maybe Josh Allen has a couple of kneel downs, which will cost you three or four yards. So I, I'm, I'm a no-go on the rushing prop. Normally, I love to bet a mobile quarterback to beat his rushing prop in the playoffs, but I think the books have adjusted to it. I do like him to go over the passing yardage, though. All right, X has been a shell of himself. Stephon Diggs is over and under 79 and a half yards. I got to lean under. He wasn't great against the Patriots. He beat it with one big play. And I think Miami's going to roll everything they can to Diggs and say, okay, you want to beat us with Crowder? You want to beat us with Gabe Davis, who's kind of been a disappointment? Dawson Knox, the running backs, that's fine. I I think Diggs is going to be a priority for the Dolphins. I think they'll do a reasonable job against them. Okay. All right. Giants and Minnesota. Here we go. Your boy, Daniel Jones. Uh, Let's see. Total yards, 286 and a half. Passing yards, 240 and a half. And rushing yards, 39 and a half. And total TDs, one and a half. Go get the rushing prop right now. And I think the TDs is good, too. Remember, these teams played all rematches. Giants had the better of it. They had the big yardage ed- edge. Somehow the Dolphins, uh, the Dolphins, the, the Vikings stole the game with that Joseph kick at the end. 
But Daniel Jones is going to run for like 70 yards. I, I, I know that number's going up. Here's another thing with props, by the way. If you're, if you're ever going to bet any of these props, if you're an overbetter, get in early. If you're an underbetter, usually get, get in late because these numbers tend to rise. People like to bet overs, so the numbers generally get higher as the week goes along. As soon as I saw Daniel Jones' number posted for rushing yardage, I immediately went over on it. I also think he'll have multiple touchdowns, despite one of the most pedestrian wide receiver rooms you'll ever see. All right, and then we go... Uh, Kirk Cousins over and under 277 and a half yards. Yeah, I don't like the Giants secondary. Big games for Jefferson and Hawkinson the last time they met. I'm going to have a lot of Hawkinson props again. And cut, look, nobody likes Kirk Cousins, it seems, but he's better than average. He went for 299 and multiple touchdowns in the first meeting. I think that's a round where he'll land in this game. I go over there. And, and Justin think, Jefferson, 93 and a half. You got yeah, Jefferson, go. right. Indoors on turf where he plays, he does his best work. I know he didn't do a lot last week, but whatever. I mean, he may be the 101 in fantasy next year. Uh, they have a very narrow usage tree, too. They're not throwing the ball to backup running backs, and they're not throwing the ball to a second tight end. It's their main guys, and I have no problem going with them. again. This is going to be the highest scoring game of the weekend. All right, Baltimore at Cincinnati. Lamar Jackson over and under one and a half knees. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Joe Burrow, 270 and a half passing yards over and under. I think the Bengals are going to control the game, and, and it's not going to afford And I respect the Ravens' defense, and I think it's going to be a game where the Bengals in the second half are playing clock ball. They're running the ball. I can't it, – it's either a no play for me or an under because I just don't think the, the Ravens' offense is going to fight back enough. Baltimore, yeah, no, since probably. their bye week, right, eight weeks, they've scored more than 17 points once. I think they've averaged 14 points a week during that span, probably yeah. on a third-string quarterback. They're limping into the playoffs. I think everybody's happy to see them because they have apps. Look, they're well-coached, and they have a good defense. But where are you going with, with Huntley or, or Anthony Brown? That's not going to work. Their wide receiver room is even worse than what the Giants have right now. I think the Bengals win this game convincingly, but it's it's going to be a case where Joe Burrow's handing off and they're keeping him out of harm's way in the second half. So I can't aggressively play the Bengals pass catchers or the Bengals passing game. Are you playing Joe Mixon over 55 and a half rushing yards? That I like, although he may need right. 20 carries to get there. He hasn't been a great Mixon yeah, but the season. second half with the extend, yep. if you get the lead and you want to run the clock and all, mm -hmm. I can see Mixon becoming – you know, kind of a bell cow in the second half and get those 55 yeah. yards. It could be like a 21 oh, like for 67 type of game. I yeah. Mix in, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. All right, what do you got going on this weekend on Yahoo so uh, folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, I'm working on my, my um, exit interview series where I go through every position the, of the four major ones and try to figure out what the heck happened. I did quarterbacks on Tuesday with messy quarterback season. And then I did tight ends. You know, people are saying, let's get rid of tight end in fantasy. I think that's a big mistake. Travis Kelsey obviously dominated this year. What Next is. week, I'll do the running backs. Next week, I'll do the wide receivers. And we just did a big podcast where we previewed all the games. Matt Harmon, Frank Schwab, and I, we gave out props. We gave out DFS recommendations. We picked all the games against the spread. So check that out. We even talked about who has better hair. Justin Herbert or Trevor Lawrence. We spent time on that. So we had, we had oh, some fun, I, too. I, I got I to go, Justin. I gotta go, Justin. It's got some. It's got some body to it. Trevor's got the flat hair. It's you know. Yeah, no, no, no. You gotta give Justin the. He's got I went the with body. Herbert. I went with Herbert. He's got more yeah, of a of a yeah, surfer look that will age well. I, I think Lawrence will probably his hair will look a little bit silly in ten years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His hair doesn't fly. Yeah, he's got bad hair like me. Yeah, uh, Justin's got cooler hair. Yeah, you know, you're if you see me today, you know why I usually wear a hat because I'm not sporting the greatest head of hair either. But it is what it is, my friend. So, yeah, again, I still we have some left here at 56. So, I'm, yeah, I'm you happy. You look good, man. You look good. Uh, so, anyway, a lot, we gave out picks, we gave out fantasy advice. And uh, if there's anything that you're, you're in a contest, you need some uh, last minute advice, you're welcome to get me, Scott underscore Pianowski. Because I know a lot of you are playing fantasy contests, one and done contests, or you're in a draft league or whatever it is. And, you know, those are fun. I mean, in one league, we can play anybody you want, but only once. So it's like, when do you play the guys? Do you save right. them? Do you use them now? Do you use them at home? You know, where is the shootout? And my final advice is this. I, again, if you're in any of that stuff where you can pick anybody you want, the game I'd be focusing on is that Giants-Minnesota game. It's indoors. Neither team has a good defense. I mean, the, the Vikings secondary, man. I, they right. made Mac Jones look great. Uh, last yeah. week they couldn't stop anything. Um, that that's going to be. I think you need thirty points to win that game. A lot of these other games are going to be blowouts or low scoring. I would focus on the Giants and the Vikings for fantasy this weekend.
There you go. Follow him on Twitter at Scott underscore Pianowski and catch his work there at Yahoo. Scott, as always, thank you, my friend. Have a blessed weekend, man. Thank you. My pleasure. Be good, Bigo. Thank you, sir. Eight great locations, Sports Grill. You got you got football, playoff football going on, man. What are you waiting for? You got all, eight awesome locations. They added the new one in Doral. It is beastly, dude. Mondays, they've got the $7 single smash burger. Tuesdays, the $2 tacos, chicken, beef, or fish. Wednesdays, the kids eat for free with the purchase of an adult entree. And during these NFL games, you can get $1.50 Bud Light drafts. And that's right. They've added new cocktails now, the cherry lemonade and the tailgate tea. Only $5 during the NFL games. $12 domestic pitchers and bone-in wings. 15% off sports grill, baby. It is the best place to go enjoy yourself a little NFL football and some great food. Sports. This is the big old show. This is the big old show.